Hey everyone, how are you guys doing? Hope you're having a good day. And indeed, we are going to have a bit of a Queen's Gambit action. And after that Queen's Gambit action, most probably than not, we're going to have a game review. So we'll be looking at some of your guys' games, which will be fun. Or at least, most of the times when we did that was big fun. All right, so let's just get ready to ramble in the Queen's Gambit arena. The freestyle, thank you for the follow. And you shall see this is a classical, classical system, but you can play it in many styles. Probably I will be able to reflect the different ways you can play it. It's a very rich system. You can play it aggressively or more solidly. It really depends on your mood. Okay. Oh, this one. I thought, that's surprising. In some ways it's surprising because it said it's Queen's Gambit, but this is actually the Che Goran, which is objectively not the best. Takes Queen takes D5 and actually White will have to face some troubles on that d4 square. Bishop e2, I shall take on d4. Notice that this pin is still alive. Whoa. Okay, I can't take because queen takes d5. I could capture and go d3. <clears throat> D7, yeah, let's just capture and go D3. And the point is I want to put more pressure on F3 and also keep the position closed. Takes, takes, takes. And I think I'm gonna castle along, just pressing on that bishop there, knight F6, and I will have very nice outposts on E4 and D5. Bishop a3, okay, let's go knight d4, just activate there. Knight d2 actually makes sense, or I could take, take, take. I think I'm gonna go knight d2, just pressing on these guys. And the whole point is I want to put pressure on the queen side later on. Hey, Miss Lethal, how are you? Okay, one. Okay, I'm gonna take this. Go bishop e6. And yes, white has the bishop bear, but there's plenty of pawn islands, which gives me some good chances. Okay, rook d5. Just preparing doubling. This is my plan to double up and just because white structure is so bad, I will have very good counterplay here. C4, question, I can go rook a5, bother that bishop or go rook g5 first. I think I'm going to go here, bishop c1, which looks a little bit passive. I have knight b4 and just winning the pawn probably not so first off I'm just going to get my other rook on the file chess friends thank you for the follow I'm having a good day thank you at the art saint a3 there okay Try to provoke some weaknesses. There. 495, d3. Probably that makes the most sense. Just trying to eliminate this bishop. And if that happens, there'll be plenty of targets on f3 and c4.
Are you about to sleep now, Miss Lethal, or were you about to sleep last time we, you saw me? Not quite sure. Yeah, so if you're just joining, we're doing this Queen's Gambit Arena, and after that I am going to do some game review by the subs of this channel. So subscribers over here. Hello, Red GM. How are you? Now, as this king is a little bit iffy, if I can so kind of put pressure on it, I will have a good chance to actually go for a win. Doing fine, doing fine. <clears throat> Look C3, let's target the C pawn. Bishop B2. Maybe I can go Rook D2. Just activate the Rook and bother that Bishop on B2 there. And just keep it on the A file. Because now this Bishop is basically paralyzed. Mm. I let a four happen. I'm not happy about it. Maybe I can just take. No, I can't. <sighs> Takes. All right, I've got to drop back which is not my favorite thing to do. Probably this was a bit too ambitious. But hey, ambitions are good and it's good to have them. Couldn't take because of f5 and there would be too much pressure. Okay, knight c5, pressing this bishop there and then I can take. There. What? Okay, can't go knight d3. A1 there, there. Takes. <clears throat> I mean, I do have a queenside majority and it's highly unbalanced. So if anything, I could still hope for an advantage here. Bishop f5, king d8, you're bringing the king towards the center. Can I trap that bishop? There might be a hope of trapping that bishop. Uh, possibly not. Actually, not. But I still have some passed pawns on the other side of the board and I should be able to start launching them forward. There, okay, five. There, okay, knight b3, there, c5. <clears throat> King e2, 
Okay, let's bring the king. Mike Laurie, thank you for subscribing for three months. Three month streak. Welcome back. There. Um, not liking this. Not liking this. There. Okay, check my d3. Ooh, that bishop is actually unfortunately placed. because it's sort of trapped by its own pieces. And games less tedious. Um, always look at the bright side. Look for some intermittent goals or goals that you could, you know, latch onto. I mean, it's not easy to make an end game fun, but um, you, know, you can always try. There, b4. The point is, this bishop, even if it leaves, will have to face the music there. Okay, takes. Wait a second. Let's take there, um, a2. Takes. Oh golly. Oh my goodness. I have to block it. Yeah, the fact that I don't have too much time doesn't really help. Does not really help, but I mean, winning the piece actually does help a whole bunch. And checkmate. And even though it took some time, hey, a win is a win. Playing the bon cloud? Well, you know, everybody does whatever they want to, and if you wanted to play the bon like I'm actually of the opinion if you like a certain opening, why not play it? But obviously you will face the consequences. The reason people don't play it because it is objectively not great. But if you want to play the bon cloud, go ahead as Nakamura did himself. That looks like a free pawn. I'm going to take that one. So I don't really have any condemning opinions on it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with playing the bon cloud. However, if you're being serious and you want to have good results, probably not the best choice. Also, I want to go castle quickly. And again, you can see why it is a little bit iffy to put your king in the middle so early on because it'll be in danger. Castles, and immediately the king is in trouble. There, and I shall win the rook. Bishop will actually escape from the clutches of these pawns. There, f6. Now, f6 is 99% of the time bad, but this one will actually close in this bishop. Hey, Harry Axler, how are you? e5, just want to get my bishop out. 
Let's get the bishop out and just get this knight back in the game as quickly as I can. Sean, thank you for the follow. All right, it's time to get on in. Get on in with my guys. Let's give a friendly check. I mean, as friendly a check can be. And never forget about peace communication. If your pieces communicate, good things will happen. If they don't, bad things can happen as well. Knight d3. Okay, knight f1. It's a check. Yes, it's hanging, but so is the g3 bishop. There, I'll take that. And now I'm ready just to bring in some extra piece, which is very important. Whenever you're playing these positions, it's important to bring in more pieces. Okay, I'm gonna take rook f2. Rook here. There, okay, bishop d4. There, let's take, takes, and a five king here. Let's try to give a pawn mate. Actually, could try b6, or maybe this is also quite stylish. So, something like this knight c6 here, and rook a5 is checkmate because I control all of these squares and the knight controls these two other squares. Hello St. Louis chess player, doing good, how about yourself? Yeah, Magnus has a deep sense of humor. Yeah, he did, did actually get into the in depths of the bon cloud opening but hey um everybody has their own passion all right so it's berserkovic and i'm gonna play something else making it interesting this is sort of a rare move but uh hey rare moves are fine Okay, I'll go bishop h4, just sort of pinning there and getting my bishop out um, there, e3. The main issue with the knight on c6, if there's no break in the center, it's kind of awkward. Knight c3, and there's no real breaks as far as I can see. Black really needed to play e5 sooner or later, now I'm just better. There, okay, let's go h4, h4 is a little iffy maybe, so let's take, ooh, knight d5 was a good move, h4, and I want to create some targets, and that's kind of the problem of pushing these pawns forward that early, white will have something to latch onto, hello Gasmin, how are you? Takes, not a very good structure, and that's why you don't want to have a knight front of your pawn because you can't really undermine it Grunfeld style. Okay. Could take, take, let's take. I want to take, go queen h5. Just be very aggressive. Now, usually this is not great, but it is due to the fact that the g and h pawn are obviously terrible. There, okay, can just develop, and let's just develop. And with a mighty center like this, this is quite good. Now I did wanna play bishop b5 and it's still on the cards, but sometimes you can just latch on these weaknesses and that's good enough.
Queen's Gambit is more likely to be to declined. Sometimes not. Sugirecha. Sometimes it's not declined. Bishop f6. Hmm. I think it's time to pin it. Bishop d7. I can castle or just get nasty. I think it's time to get nasty or e4. e4, e5. Huh. Let, let's get behind the flanks and then the king just doesn't feel that good. It's actually sort of struggling. Yeah, do watch anime, Curtis. And in fact, as mentioned earlier, Cowboy Bebop is a legendary one at it as well. So guys, if you just join in, welcome to this channel. We'll be doing some game review after this tourney. So if you're interested, you want to see stuff stick around i think i'm gonna go bishop a4 just retaining this idea and i can go here or c2 i think i'm gonna go here because knight a5 actually would help my opponent reorganize and i don't want that not at all it's not on my agenda to really help my opponent get his her pieces in order yeah, Trigon is amazing. I really like Trigon. Also, if I can start pushing the center, I could have a Connect 3. Sort of a belated Connect 4. But hey, a Connect 3 is fine enough. And the thing is, this king is in major pickle because of my lady and my king can always hide away to g1 if it wants to yeah steins gate is amazing as well but um obviously all those listed were pretty good <clears throat> and you might be asking why is white better white is better because of a better structure these pawns really don't have that much control over the all important or squares, which is crucial in chess. So I can't take, but I was thinking of taking. Hmm. Or e4 with e5. I think I'm gonna go ahead and play for e4, e5, just pushing my opponent away and kind of closing in that bishop. There, knight c4. Okay, let's go e5. Now that bishop is going to be quite bad. I'll be able to go knight g5. It's defended, and the king is still in quite a, a big trouble.
there and I have knight f7. The whole point is if queen f7, I have bishop g6 and the king is stuck. Otherwise, the king really doesn't have a good move. So this is actually looking quite disastrous for my opponent. Bishop c6. Okay. Hmm. g5 I don't know why I thought on that move I really shouldn't have there was nothing to be thought about in that one lightning speed thank you for the follow just targeting this pawn there bishop e4 I'm gonna get rid of my opponent's best piece and also just kind of lurking around my opponent's king. There, okay, I'll take, and that's a check. I just captured the rook, and then it's basically game over. So why I didn't go knight g5? Possibly knight g5 was also possible. But e4, e5, there was no reason for go, going for another way. This is just very simple play. You can occupy the most important squares, and that hardly can be wrong. And sometimes you've got to be practical. You just go for it and just go try to take control of the center. You don't always have to look for tricks. Because sometimes tricks can go against you. And I couldn't quite take on c7 because of the c3 pawn hanging and my king was a little bit iffy so I had to be careful with that one. So again the whole point of the Chigorin is attacking this guy on d4. If I can't attack it then the whole concept of having a knight there is bad. Bishop f4 kind of feels wrong. Let's go knight f6. There. Okay. Might be... Let's take... Don't know if I'm doing this correctly. At a5. I think this is a little bit dodgy on my part. There, c6. I want to go b5 then. And that'll, that'll be the big plan. You've won more games with practical play. No, I, I feel ya. Practical play can be quite an advantage. I have three. I think I can go b5, just kicking the queen. Everything's connected now. Or even though this knight is clumsy, a pawn is a pawn. And is a pawn and is a pawn. At b5, I'll take that, but I will be able to block this idea with bishop d7. And apart from not being quite enough, I have a feeling that this king will be way more vulnerable than mine.
queen c5, sort of running straight into e6, hitting and running into the power of my bishop. Very aggressive play, but way too aggressive. White needs to go castle first. Now this will have repercussions, terrible repercussions. There, okay, let's give a friendly check, asking where the king is going. Knight d2, I shall take that. I shall take that and collect a lady. Lady that is mine. Yep, knight e4 was quite a problem. That's why you need to castle people. You saw that coming? Yeah, it wasn't that surprising, actually. So yeah, um, unfortunately this is not the Queen's Gambit that I hoped that we would be playing, but hey, sometimes you have what you have. Why do 2000s don't blunder against you? Well, you have to follow the principles for actually being able to break, break them, one, that's one thing, but the other thing is you really have to know what you're looking for. Let's go. Berserk and go bishop g5 and pinning. H6, bishop h4. And I mean, um, you know, obviously it takes time to better yourself as a player. And if you do, Okay, let's just go e3. You just have to follow the principles and that will help you actually take advantage of your opponent's play. There. knight c3 and the whole point is of my play is to put pressure on my opponent king side and also pressure on the queen it's not about being a gm paulus it's never about being a gm it's about following the chess principles and castling in due time takes that looks very very iffy I don't know if I could go d5, knight a5. Yep, let's go. And the reason why the Chigorin is so dangerous is because white is about to gain lots of lots of space. Knight e5. Okay. Go e4 or knight f3, let's say. Still kind of an open dilemma. Um, e4. Takes, takes, takes. Queen d4. That doesn't help me. Does not help me. Thank you for the follow. Let's 
do a Korean A4 check. Yeah, I mean, psychological pressure does mean something, obviously. So sometimes people do get scared of their opponents for one reason or another, but that doesn't necessarily mean that fear is justified. Okay, let's drop back. <clears throat> And even though black has plenty of pieces in the center, white has more pawns in there, and I'm much, much closer to castle. Not that it's necessarily that safe for me to castle just yet. Hey, the ice, how are you? We're just doing some Queen's Gambit sessions, and after that, we will have some game review. <clears throat> and that's actually the main issue for black. If this king would be castled, black would be doing fine, but that king is still stuck in the middle. So that's why it's relatively comfortable for white. b5 wow that's a very aggressive choice by my opponent is it good i don't know looks a little bit iffy i'm gonna go knight f3 yes i'm ruining the structure but i'm getting a pawn closer to the center and also developing a piece Oh, it's night for you, Miss Lethal. I didn't know that. And again, I've got one pawn in the center. There's nobody around for black. Nobody in the middle, that is. And also, I'm a few moves away from putting my king into safety. However, I am down a pawn, so the position is still sort of complicated. C6, okay, all right, I could take, take, hmm. All right, I'm gonna capture. And now you're gonna long castle. Kind of brave decision, but hey, sometimes you've gotta go brave. All right, let's castle. And now, even though I'm down a pawn, Black's King is still in the mid, trying to survive and such. Monday in Australia. Well, man, that's, that's crazy. So oftentimes development does count as compensation. Yeah. 
in c7 now that sort of runs into this idea of queen e4 if here i can take check and whenever your opponent's pieces are still in the middle and there's no castling in sight try some checks they might help you out in trouble Indeed, but this runs into dc and it's basically over because you can't really capture back because of the pin and in any other cases the d7 bishop is falling So this is very much annoying for black. <laughs> Bishop d6 question can I take here first takes then I can take the piece there yeah I mean it's multiple ways of winning I could take here first or just take on d7 in each case it's over so it's kind of understandable that my opponent resigned and again that's what you see castle as quickly as possible even if it's move 11 and then we win also, side note, if queen e5, I had dc, and there's no time for queen e4 because cd7 is a check. Was better off for your opponent to protect by the bishop and castle? Um better off to go and try to castle as quickly as possible. That that's the thing that I would have do though would have done that is um yeah that's kind of the deal over there right let's see let's try this again I'm trying to sort of play against my opponent's position Knight f6, okay, um, I'll go knight c3. e6, but that kind of kills the scope of that bishop. We'll just go e3. And also this knight is not supposed to be on c6 because c5 is very difficult to push on through in these type of positions. Okay, knight f3, controlling that important square. a6, uh-huh. Go rook c1, sort of anticipating any action. also want to press over there. Okay, then I can go bishop f4, just eyeing the c pawn, which will be a juicy target for later on. There, let's mix it up with g4. With h6, I will have some targets against that king. Knight g4 was a little bit brave, I think, because I can take. What? I'll take and this knight will have no place to go to I'll check and then take here there okay go here if I want to hey why not exchange Queens I'm up a piece there knight h2 or just ninety two. In both cases looks pretty good. H five. Okay, let's just maneuver back. Maybe it's a little bit too circumspect, actually. 
there. Bishop f7. Just trying to have control over the position. And it's just too good. So in fact, this g4 idea is quite interesting when your opponent played h6, because you can go ahead and go hammer through with g4, g5. My opponent took it, and that was a big mistake. But in any case, that's an idea worth trying slash remembering. And if you're interested in that topic, I would definitely check out this game between Krishuk and Karuana, which featured this idea of G4. Well, it did happen in a Kramnik game, but it's a, in a completely different variation. Completely, completely different variation at that. Okay, and that's Berserkovich there, Bishop G. Oh, let me play Bishop G4, please. And the whole point is you want to go for the E5 break. There, let's go D4. I think even DC is quite good, but this is more of the Albin kind of playing of the position. Bishop e2, but this sort of runs into bishop b4. There, hmm, d3, d3. It just takes now let's go d3 I'm just going to play against this bishop takes knight b4 there if I go queen d7 Hmm. Queen d7, if exchange, then there's knight c2, c6, takes d2. Now let's just go back. My book, thank you for subscribing to Twitch Prime for four months. Welcome back. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead. Knight e7, castle. And this d3 pawn is a big torn in White's position. In fact, giving me quite good play. h3. I don't really have to react. Just draw back to e6 and target this pawn. And so far, this looks quite reasonable. I mean, again, there's a disconnect between those guys, which is crucial. Crucial, crucial. Let's play a5, so there's no b4 idea ever. And oftentimes, that's what's more important, not giving your opponent chances to consolidate. Okay. Um, I can't go there though, which is annoying. Let's go queen d7. Knight d4. Alright, let's go. Let's go for the attack. Let's go for the attack. Always go for it. I will get a couple of pawns and 
if I can somehow swing on over a rook, then the attack will be near decisive. Now the queen itself, it's not enough, but I will have this threat of knight h4 in coming, which will set up mates on g2. Hey Lauren, how are you? <clears throat> Queen there. Hmm. The thing is, this queen is undefended. If I go here, there's queen e4, but there's knight d4 takes, and here. Takes here. I can take here. There's no ed because queen. Oh, that's a lady. That is a lady, my friend. Otherwise, there would be rook d8 attacking that guy. So here, the problem was takes rook d8, pressure here. If the queen moves, then either I checkmate or I win the piece. Okay. Now I shall come over. Well, just knight f4. Just activate the horse. Four there. Okay, a four, just bothering that knight. Let's take that. And it's a win. We came seventh in a tournament ran by David Proust. Congrats! I beat the 2200 player and I had a slight advantage in an endgame versus a 2300 player. What type of ratings were those? Was that Lee Chess, Chesscom, or Fide? Takes. Okay, wait, I can go d5, and this knight is sort of clumsy. Chess.com, okay. Yeah, sorry, I did not want to bait you there, just. Uh, Wanted to know in d4, and this is actually a typical idea trying to undermine the e5 knight. f6. As far as I know, that's barely a threat. I go e3 and such. Or e4. Let's just drop back. Why? Why would be tempted? Knight h six e four, holding that square and f six, starting to look quite bad in this sense because it creates holes in Black's position. It is still up a pawn, so it's not that simple. But um, your rating rating went. Briefly over 2200, congrats, that's nice, that's very nice. B5, okay. Let's go knight c3. And you can notice that I am trying to take a total control of the center. Hey, Joanna, how are you? Happy Sunday. So why do you think you had those good results, Lauren? Can you tell me what was going on for you? A6, now here comes the question. Go here, which makes sense, or not F3. I think I'm gonna go here first. Pressing this knight, and then I either go f4 or knight f3. And if you want to, feel free to post your game. I'd be happy to take a look at it at, let's say, one of your favorite ones. 
Okay, let's go F4. Well, you always should go for castling, Harry. You've been doing tactics as Lauren on chess tempo, 30 minutes of blitz tactics, 30 minutes of calculation, deep positions, 30 minutes tactics. Uh-huh, okay. All right, I think I can start rolling because black is severely neglecting the idea of castling, which is a problem. So one thing that is mo most important is to check your own mistakes. That's probably the most critical one. Without that, improving is quite difficult. I mean, obviously we improve because chess is an objective game. So we can make really good moves without preparing those good moves. However, if you want to get better, you've got to take a look at those games. There now, I've got to be careful here, not to mess it up. But not messing it up is the hard part. Okay. Hmm. All right, let's castle. Oh, every game you analyze. Good, Lauren, that's great. Yeah, just post it. Over there. <clears throat> it's an arena, that GM, so I have no control over who am I playing. Okay, and it is time slowly to play e6 or something of that sort. Yeah, it's time for e6. And this king is just terrible over there. Although, I still have to put pressure. There, it's time to double up. Uh, post it whichever you want in um, in Discord, and I can move it from there. Should be two again. I want this rook in. I mean, obviously, mostly I want to checkmate, but it will take some time to get my guys over there. You can do that too, Laura. Yeah, black is relatively, I mean, not relatively, really, really, really cramped. I'm trying to press against black species as much as possible. There, okay. All right, it's time to go aggro against that bishop because it's getting quite irritating. That bishop's getting very irritating. Uh, get rid of it. Thank you for the follow, Dragon Knight. H5, but that will have its consequences. Namely, Knight F4 will be a nasty idea. There, I don't even care about that Knight, that moment. Takes, I'll take. There, I could ignore it, but I can just capture. That's also fine. My queen is right there to protect. I don't think I worry about that one too much. I have threats over on the other side as well. Knight d5. Okay. Seems like... Seems like some free stuff. 
Let's take some free stuff. If takes, I'll capture back, and I'm happy. Now, oftentimes, if your opponent is lagging in development, you might just go for an attack. There, let's just hide this king from danger. Because why not? Let's just do that. Yeah, and it's basically just an extra rook. And again, you never ever want to allow a pawn to go to e6 because that runs into trouble. And this actually leads to mate because of that. Lauren's asking, what I want to know is how can I have two close games and one win against 2200 plus players in 15 minutes time controls but struggle to beat 1600 players in Lee Chess three minute games? Um, when we're going to take a look at the game, we're going to discuss that topic. Okay. Opponent is not here. Okay. In fact, when I was just a young kid trying to grow as a player, I had similar issues. I was a bit more focused against stronger opposition, which is somewhat shocking. But hey, you know, like chess is partly about focus. If you can focus, your performance will be better. And if your attention drops, that can be a problem. But again, we're going to get into that a bit later. Okay, that's Berserkovic. And I'm playing for this one. It's probably a little bit. Um, okay, let's go knight c3. It's not the main, main idea, but I think bishop g5 is quite interesting. There, um, could take, take e4, takes d5, knight e5. All right, I'm going to take, then possibly, definitely take. All right, let's play it gambit style. I think that's a better choice than anything else. Bishop b4. Hmm, interesting. Takes. I want to try this one, check and take here, which will make a kind of funny looking position, but doesn't mean it's necessarily bad. there okay if you go there i can maybe just go e takes d5 i think i'm gonna do it that way i was originally wanting to play queen d5 here i can long castle my point is i'm no longer in pin this knight is threatened and this king is still in the middle
yeah there will be some game reviews going on flash aha ticks i'll tick knight f5 mm. Bishop d3, knight f3, let's just give a friendly check, e f8, strange, 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 strange. Bishop g3, it's sort of a weird position, my king is a little bit open but this king is a bit clumsy as well. So I don't know if this is so tragic. Well, castling kingside is queenside is always quite risky. Okay, let's drop back. There, let's develop. It's always important to get your guys out, and that's what I will be doing. There, okay. Troop c4, just over defending. I really couldn't go there and I don't really want to. In d2. And I will be trying to reorganize. Maybe bishop d3 is actually quite nice here. Holding those important squares. h5 interesting choice <clears throat> i think i might go h3 hide the bishop and such takes i mean i don't really mind that one because i want to break with g4 anyways let's see takes now nah, i'm gonna go g4 any exchange is fine as long as my pieces are close to this king yeah you can use zen mode too and that was kind of my point i want to just hammer away in this side and that's actually what you can do when there's opposite side castling. I mean, my opponent castled with the hands, but it's still technically a castle. You spend some time in the Zen monastery. That sounds cool. Thank you for the follow, Lord Parrot. Rook h8. That feels a little passive, especially once my knight hops to e6. This might just get decisive because there's nobody who can bother my knight. And there are just too many targets around the king side. F7. Okay. I could go queen d4 first. There takes, takes, and queen f3. Kind of like this idea of going queen d4 now, immediately eyeing that and sort of restricting that's why if you get the chance put your queen in the center now not at the beginning of the game it's move 23 so it's kind of in the deep of the middle game you activate your queen so your opponent pieces will be more passive the whole point is that i control important squares and also prepare ideas against the king on f7 
Now this is actually quite annoying for my opponent. There, let's go look f1, hide that pawn. Knight e8. I think I can think about taking if I want to. Takes, takes. Rook f1, queen e7, g5 is there. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Rook f1. And because of this monster on e6, the sacrifice is actually quite promising. Queen e7, g5. That's a huge threat. Anti-tilt helps me avoid the tilt as much as I can. GF, now I will have another very strong passer. Apart from that monster over there. Let's go king b1. No more checks. Again, thanks to this queen, everything's defended and in order. Only thing left is to checkmate. Okay. Mm. E5. Let's just push the pawn first. There. Okay. <sighs> e5. There, all right. Hmm. Let's just go queen g7 now. There's always knight f8. And the rook can't really move because I promote. C6, let's take, takes, take, B takes, King C2, I'm setting up Rook D1. There, queen d4. The end game is obviously winning because when you win that, I'm gonna win the c and a pawn, and it's just over. And then we exchange, I win this guy, and the d pawn is just rolling down the board. King there, okay, let's go push the pawn. There is a no rush, g4, takes. I don't know why I played g4, really didn't have to, but it's still quite good. One of the things that you really have to do is not let, you know, don't lose the grip. That's one of the most important parts. Okay, king c5. Any rook move, I'll exchange. My king is just too close and I'm just gonna start collecting pawns. Okay, um, a5. Just gonna over defend the a pawn. And it's just game over. Got five. 
E6, and I'm just going to collect. There, ticks. D7. The rook can't move because I promote. And then my king will have space to move around. And now this is just winning and promoting without really any glitch. There's no way of stopping it. six every exchange is good for me and this is just a ggo how about resignation i don't think i would object if my opponent would resign i don't see a reason why that would be such a terrible choice but hey it's my opponent's decision not gonna take that away from me opponent. <laughs> okay, takes fine. Now I'm promoting. Okay. And checkmate. Nice, 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 nice. Did I see Rockport's games? Of course I did. Rockport was playing amazingly. All right, so let's do Berserkovic. Okay, Bishop G4. Again, we're trying to press on the D pawn, which is crucial. E5. <clears throat> there I shall take on d4 In fact, this is kind of the good version of the Chigoran because of there will be weakened E pawn. There, let's give a check. Bishop D2. Okay, I'll take that. Queen D2, let's. Let's see, I'm gonna go knight f6 and then I can castle short or long, I don't know yet which way. Okay. Let's go queen f5 just for a change. Uh, 
asked for a change. Let's go Queen F5. Do I think it was disrespectful? I think it's not disrespectful to play a chess game. I think it's completely respectful to want to play a position. And it is not up to me as the opponent to decide what is correct and what is not. D, and I'm gonna eye this guy on D4. But everybody has differing opinions on that one. I don't know. I really don't have like a firm opinion. Let's go and double up on the D4 pawn. <clears throat> there, let's double. Let's double, double. takes okay i'll take because i want to keep this beautiful structure and there's only one target and that's the d4 pawn and this is what we call pawn island so if i can keep mine together then my position will be better but have to be careful though. Just make sure that these guys are defended. Queen a3. Okay, doesn't this run into this idea of queen b5 hitting this knight and hitting the pawn? Knight C3 I can take. I mean, it's rare to see a rook on B6, but hey, if it has a target, then it's not that bad. In some sports, taunting is a penalty, or I guess an offense. Some sorts, well, that's true. It's probably true. We take. Hmm. I could. I can't go there. All right, let's take this pawn though. For better or for worse. Queen e7. I think I have rook d7 because this is defended, so I'm not worried. Although this is sort of a dangerous move. But as long as everything's defended, I'm good. Long everything's defended, white is doing fine. Okay, rook e6. I'm just asking the screen to please leave the area. Queen c5. Okay. Just go ahead and exchange off the queens. Or at least plan to do so. Queen c3. Now, as I have the advantage, every exchange helps me. So I'm going to exchange that knight.
things. I have lots of pressure and that's why you don't want to have these pawns so remote because it can become an issue. I'm gonna go queen a6. Just making sure everything's defended. Harry Kush, thank you for the tier one sub. Welcome, welcome. Okay, let's take that pawn. Again, I have to be careful not to have any back rank tricks. But as far as I can see, there isn't any. And if there isn't any, that's a good thing. I think this is a new stream, as per what I see, Killer Stapler. And by the way, after this tournament, we are going to have our good old... Okay, there, Queen F5. All right, let's drop back, defending this trick. Queen F3. Okay. Let's just start pushing the pawn. Rook there, okay, I shall take this guy on a2. Takes, okay. Actually, maybe this wasn't such a great idea. Mm. Mm -hmm -hmm. Anyways, let's push. Let's push, push, push. <clears throat> and I will be banking on the strong passer. There, let's... Tr I want to drop back, like, really badly. Yeah, and I will. Just make sure everything's defended. And I'm going to bank on the B-pawn. takes um let's push it wait i can't really push i can't push just yet let's go rook b8 preparing this b b push idea Rook there. Okay. Um, just go back. I don't mind as long as my pieces are behind there, supporting each other. There. Okay. Why isn't this working for me? Check. Actually, it works. I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's take. The eight. <clears throat> G6. Let's 
there. Let's centralize the lady. B6. <laughs> There, uh, queen c4. Oh, what am I, what am I trying to do? Why also, h5. B4. E3, that was actually a mistake, should have played rook b3. There, okay, queen c3. D4. Okay, Queen G7. Here. Ah, it's nothing. Oh man. Oh my god. Ah. Yeah, it's just I misplayed it. I'll take and just promote. Yeah, it wasn't perfect, but hey. Hey, 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 whatever. Still a win. Yep, and obviously, I played forever. So, congrats to Girinath. Even though I could have finished that up quicker, probably. And maybe even that, Dan. It's just second place. Anyways. Let's take a look at what we have. Let me see. Let's look at Lauren's game. Okay. So we are uh, going to be doing the game review. You are black, so we're going to flip the board. Okay, so the thing is, whenever we play like stronger players, maybe you're quite similar to my style, I concentrate way better when I play higher rated people because I know that I don't and will not get away with just doing whatever I want to do. And in this sense, it actually kind of gives me the mentality to put more if effort in it. And this is, can be a bit subconscious or psychological because oftentimes we do this like without thinking. Like if we play someone of a high profile, we definitely play them like they're the best of the best. And we know that, that we have to be very precise And you also wanted to win, exactly. Okay. Um, oh. All 
knight so e4 e5 knight c6 d6 again i mean maybe this is your specific line that you like a lot but i would still advise you to play a6 and d6 and you would get the exact same position with the extra improvement of b5 at some times that extra move that can be quite useful one of the big tricks here is d4 b5 here takes 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 and this actually loses to c5 it's queen b5 c4 and this bishop is trapped bishop f7 doesn't work because seemingly it wins the rook but it really doesn't because i have bishop e6 blocking the check and defending the rook Exterry, thank you for the follow. So I definitely would advise you to add this a6 move with your d6 because it will improve your position. You were scared to go into a line you haven't studied? That's fine, that's a normal thing to do. So you just wanted to be solid? Fine. There's nothing wrong with d6, just a6 might be a little bit better. d4, bishop d7, castles, knight f6, knight c3, ed, takes, bishop e7, good old classical line, castles, takes, bc. Now, did you consider bishop takes c6 in this position? And this is actually an important question just based on what's going on in here. I wanted to maintain my two bishops because the pawn would be coming to c6 anyway. Okay, fair point. But who has more space advantage? If you think about that for a second. White does. So if white has more space, it actually makes sense to exchange. So bishop c6 probably objectively is the best move because with every exchange, it's much easier for you to move around. And in fact, notice your knight will be given a square on d7. You can go bishop f6, let's say b3, knight d7. You can go immediately and set up this bishop f6 idea with some pressure on e4 later on with knight c5 and rook e8 and that's kind of the typical plan in these type of positions so b takes c6 is a more compact way of playing but as a room as a rule of thumb if you have less space exchanging is advantageous for the side who has um, less space in general yeah, exchange when less space, correct, Lauren. And you can also see that you will have much more room to maneuver in this specific scenario. But BC, there's nothing wrong with that. Bishop D3, H6. Good, taking away some squares. B3, Knight H7. I like that maneuver. That's a very nice maneuver. What was your plan after knight h7, though? I'm curious. What was your main idea? But isn't giving up the two bishops a big problem? Not really, because whenever you know you exchange this white squared bishop for the other white squared bishop, your opponent also loses the bishop pair, so it's basically a fair trade. It's not a big deal. Six h6, knight h7, and I'm wondering what was your idea behind knight h7? Usually the knight comes to g5 or f5 pawn push depending on white's response. Okay. Sometimes you can also go bishop f6 and just bother your opponent on this side of the board. Var, thank you so much for the raid. Shout out to the legendary Var Okobian. 
Hope you had a fun stream. I saw you do some games and some reviews. Hope you had a fun time there. And see you very soon at the chess club. So, let's see. So, bishop f6 is one of those ideas, but f5 is also obviously on the map. Hey, Kalias. Hey, St. Louis chess player. Okay, f4, f5. Very good. So, so far, what I can say about your play is that you're playing thematic chess. And I think that's very important. Whatever you do, make sure that you have an idea and you execute it as well. Kalias, thank you for the follow. Hey there, Bar. Good to see you. And also thank you for the raid. We are just looking at games from our subs and we're trying to learn and enjoy what's going on. Hey, Chelsea. Also shout out to Chelsea Monica, a fellow streamer. Yeah, great to see you as well. Thank you for the uh, follow. I'm losing my mind. St. Louis chess player, thank you for the follow. Um, so F5, and I like this. I like this play so far, Lauren. You've been very thematic so far. F4, F5, not letting you get too cramped. 5, EF, bishop takes, takes, takes. And as we talked about earlier, every exchange in a cramped position is more advantageous for the one who has less space than for the, one, the side that has more. Doing homework, so enjoying the stream. <laughs> I'm glad you do, Chelsea. Thematic, what I mean thematic is sort of following your plans. So whenever you play h6, you didn't just play h6. You had the idea of regrouping with knight h7, f5. If you would have just played h6 and then let's say rook b8, I would say, what was the point? I don't see the concept behind it. So you like had a deeper underlying plan going on. f4, f5, takes, takes. Takes, takes, queen g4, queen d7. So in this position, did you stop and wonder what else you can do in this position? If you didn't, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just curious. I was hoping to trap my opponent into rook takes bishop. Oh, I see. Uh huh. Okay. But did you consider any other moves apart from queen d7? Not really. Okay. I mean, queen d7 is completely fine. In fact, a cute little trick. Because if takes, takes, queen takes f5, queen e1 is checkmate which is cutesy. And again, we can talk about the fact that White hasn't been developing that much and that's why he, she could get mated with Queen E1. Now, the other move that I was kind of referring to is Rook F7. And the reason I would want to mention this move is because it defends the E7 bishop, the G7 pawn, and you don't have anything hanging in this case. So there's nothing wrong with queen d7, however in the long term your queen will be pinned, you can't ever move it, and sometimes this rook e7 will be a problem. That's why I would consider this move of rook f7 stepping aside of these pins and ideas. If queen e6, which looks annoying, you always have knight f8 chasing this queen away, and then just bishop f6 with 
a standard nice position. And if they go queen c4, hitting this pawn, you can go queen d7 now. And this pin will not last for too long because you'll play d5 and you'll have the central advantage. Um, there's nothing wrong with your move queen d7. I'm just mentioning rook f7 as an idea, a backup idea that you could use. Sometimes I fall into traps a little too much. Yeah, that, that is a problem in chess. Anyways, queen d7 is good. Oh, and they fell for it. Oh no. Did that actually happen? Yes, it did. Oh no. Nice trick. So it actually worked. Queen takes, but let's see how the technique goes. Rook f8. Okay. So here you know you're winning. Everybody knows you're winning in this position. What you should be doing when you have a winning position? I want to hear some first thoughts. And this is actually very important. I was a little lost, says Lauren, at this point. It took me a few moves to find a plan. A, you could solidify the position. Yeah? Trade consolidate. Okay. So the question I have, if we can retain the initiative, should we consolidate or have the initiative? Consolidate, initiative. Consolidation first if there's no clear path, says Usama Kar. Okay, maintain the initiative. So, Lauren played rook f8, which is a very good consolidating move. And in this sense, still perfect. I'm not going to complain about it at all. However, there is a move that actually retains the initiative. So, Lauren and everybody who's watching, you're welcome to find the move. Consolidation is a safe bet, and I think that Lauren's rook f8 move was good. However, there is a second choice that is worth a mention, at least. Yep, queen e3 check, and you could pick up the pawn on f4. And you could be scared of some tactical tricks, but at the end of the day, there's rook takes g4, and you're just up the exchange. Obviously, c takes would run into queen g7, but that's not an issue, because you just take the queen, you're up the exchange. So whenever you get into what we call a winning position, don't be in a rush to consolidate, obviously, Consolidation is fine, but do check for at least one or two minutes to check if you can win some more material. Because the more material, the more likely you're going to win it quicker. And that's kind of the point. But Rook F8 is still high class, very good move. You're attacking the F4 pawn, but most importantly, defending all your pieces. And that's probably the thing that you really, really want to do once you get an extra piece, an extra pawn, an extra rook, or whatever. Make sure that your pieces are defended. From then on, it's much easier to win the game. g3, in e3 check, okay. in d2, and you go gobbling now. Perfect. In e2, takes, takes. Rook f7. Rook f7 is nice. Can anybody tell me why rook f7 is such a great move? And in fact, it has a name in chess circles. I have a specific name for moves like rook f7. It's called 
prophylaxis. So Lauren sees that opponent is planning to go knight d4, double attack the rook and pawn. So she decides to go rook f7 instead. So knight d4 will just hit thin air there and only attack the pawn. And this is a very, very nice little move. Something that you really want to keep in mind if you're new to this game. If your opponent has threats, you can have these countermeasures, sort of famously used by the world champion Tigran Petrosha. He liked these ideas of moving, withdrawing some pieces if he saw that the opponent is setting up some threats against them. Yeah, this is sort of a dodging move. Yes, getting out of dodge, exactly. King f3, knight f6. This knight was out of play, you're bringing it back. f6, bishop takes, rook takes, knight d4, g5. Okay, what was your idea behind this move of g5? Lawrence says, that's not why I did it. I had a sense that the rook was in danger and moved it to give it more activity too. That specific threat wasn't seen. But the idea was correct. In any case, your move was perfect. Give me shelter. Thank you for subscribing with the tier one sub. Subscribe for eight months. Welcome back. Also, anyone who are just joining, do check us out our socials. We do discuss chess, anime, and what have you. But let's go back to this game for a second. So, why did you play g5 here? I wanted to create a passed pawn or break up the kingside pawn chain for an attack. Didn't think I could hold on to all my queenside pawns. Okay, now you could actually try and play d5 and defend them. Now I do understand c5, knight b5, this can get annoying. And you're correct with that. But with d5 you could have defended. One of the things that you will have to be very very circumspect with is that when you get the advantage you've got to be careful with these moves such as g5 however your move of g5 now is very strong because you have very very many pieces eyeing that f4 pawn and if f5 you got c5 and this f5 pawn falls in fact g5 was probably the best move in the position e5 takes g4. The only thing that I will mention though, in other cases, when you're uncertain whether g5 is good or not, I would refrain from it. Why? Because your king is safe at the moment, you have the extra exchange, and if you play d5, your advantage is safe. But whenever you play g5, you actually create targets in your position. However, in this specific case, I think you were correct to do so. Takes, takes, rook e6, very nice, getting on the e-file, g5, check, f3, okay, f2, rook e1, check, takes, king g3, rook e2, okay, okay, so chat, out of 10, what would be the point you would give for this game? How would you rate this game out of 10? From a black's perspective, obviously. And then I'll give my thoughts as well. So I see Ananokeji giving a 9 out of 10, Jim C giving a 10, Flash Aha uh -huh, giving a 9, a King loves Queen a 9. 
It was a Lauren playing. Who was she playing exactly? Uh, Hephaestus. And to be honest with you, I think you played perfect chess. Lauren, this was a very, very good game by you. Yeah, it was per it was literally perfect. Whatever you did, it was on point. And yes, your opponent did fall for your trick, but you did set up that trick and it worked. <laughs> no problem on an OKG, no problem. So why can I play like that versus a 2200 but struggle versus a 1600? Um, that's a difficult question. I mean, what really worked for you in this game is that you followed through with your plans. So you played quite high level chess, to be honest with you. All of your moves had a purpose. And if you can keep following that pattern of giving purpose to your moves, the more likely you're going to get these great results over and over again. Possibly the issues that you face is A, maybe this was a longer time control, correct? It wasn't like the three minute one. So either you spend more time and you come up with more quality moves, 50 minutes, that could be one reason. Or the other reason could be is that you don't come up with these sort of plans in your other games. So your goal should be to get positions where you're familiar with your own plans. Because as we've seen in this game, if you can follow through with your plans, you're playing quite well. Maybelief is saying, maybe he underestimated you. I sometimes do that too. It is na the nature of humans. Well, that is possible, but chess is an objective game. If someone plays good moves, it really doesn't matter what the opponents were thinking. Good moves are good moves, and that's it. Would that mean it's time for opening study? It means that you should decide what openings you want to play, yes, and keep practicing them so you get familiar with these ideas. Because in this specific game, you showed a good understanding of this position and that's why you won the game. I think you played just as good as your opponent. So, your opponent's rating was 2239. I think you matched that. I mean, obviously, you were the one playing that level, not your opponent, because your opponent did fall for some tricks. But all of your moves were quite good. Now, this was one off game. It means you have the potential of, you know, following through with that one but you do have to work on it to actually get there. All right, so let me see. Game number two. I'm going to take a look at a game between Edgar Saint and Maksut. Um, on an OKG, if you want to post, Feel free to do so. Okay, uh, let me edit another black game. Well, that's gonna go in my best games memoir. <laughs> Lauren, sure, I mean, you did well. Can go into that folder, definitely. D4. And C5. Now C5 is kind of the younger brother of the big Benoni. And this is the younger brother for a reason. Knight F6, C4, C5, here E6, 
here takes takes this is the big benoni where white already committed this pawn push with c4 so c5 d5 the pawn is already on c4 and you're going to get these benoni structures however when you're playing the younger brother's variation okay dc is not a good move d5 this actually allows a very very interesting idea for white can you guys spot what is the difference can you spot the difference here My coach advised me to always go for the old Benoni, says Edgar Saint. I'm starting to question that he really knows what the Benoni is about. Um, I don't know. I don't know why you're so critical. You might be correct or might not. I don't know. But in this specific case, when you go C5 on move 1, it has one drawback. And that is Knight C3. White is not forced to play C4 where you would just transpose back. White can actually go knight c3, d6, e4. And the difference is, compared to the Benoni, you will not get a majority. Like in these type of structures, you do get a queenside majority, let's say. You do get a queenside majority for black, even though it is still slightly better for white due to the space advantage. And if you do it this way, you don't have that majority and you really don't have any targets, nor can you really go for e6 because in this case, this bishop will be much more active. It's not blunted by the c pawn. So it is a completely different structure. And as per as what I know from theory, this is not that good. So if you want to get the proper Benoni, you should go knight f6 and c5 first. But okay, c5, dc, which is not such a great move. e6, just fine. As far as I know, you can even go knight a6 and take the pawn, but e6 is good. b4, and b4 is a bad, bad mistake. White is making a chess sin. What is the chess sin that White is following or making. Not playing around the center, that's one thing, yeah. So first off, you want central control. What is the second thing you want to achieve in chess? Develop pieces, yes. So when white started to push pawns, like push the pawn, takes and play b4, yes, white managed to defend this pawn for the moment, but is neglecting development, which is something you never want to do. a5, very strong move. And as a matter of principle, winning the pawn and then defending with b4, is usually not the way to play because a you will be behind in development and b usually you will not be able to retain that extra pawn lauren has a point and referring to the previous game you know what you're totally right just thinking back whenever i get a position from an opening i do know example exchange Rui. Steinitz, Steinitz scotch with black. I absolutely dominate my opponents because I know the plan. It frames my tactical and strategical thinking and I find it much easier to play. 
why don't you realize that? I mean, the first thing of chess improvement is to understand what's going on with you and understanding your strengths and weaknesses. Anyways, back to this game. A5 is a very strong move. Now, queen f6 looks juicy. However, white can still block with c3 and it's not that good. You don't want to bring your queen out to f6 unless it wins material. Oh, Dentist, thank you for the follow. A5, c3. Oh no! Oh no! Tragedy. Tragedy is about to strike. Guys, it's time. It's time to punish white. It's black to move and win. The absolute classic. At the moment, we are reviewing games from our subscribers. That rook is gonna fall? Well, maybe, but the question is how? Oh, your goal was to get the strength to study openings, and you're there. Congrats, congratulations. Yep. The simple plan of takes, takes, and queen f6, and that rook is falling, takes, takes, queen f6. Now, just a side note, if you turn out to become a d4 player, this actually works here as well with reversed colors, b5, a4, c6, takes, takes, queen f3, and voila, it's the same thing, black has nothing that he, she can put in front of it, and you're just lost. So in this game, it was practically over after a5 takes and queen f6. And then on, Edgar Saint managed to win. So these are these tactical tricks and traps in the openings, well worth remembering. Another bit of a side note that I'm going to give you guys is the following. If the knight, let's say, let's say it was knight f6 here, c5 takes e6, b4, a5, c3, there is a thematic way of undermining the structure. Can you guys find the way to undermine white's structure of c5, b4, and c3? In this case, you will not have this winning shot of queen f6. You don't have this, the knight is in the way. But you do have a way to undermine the structure of white. Lauren, thank you for the cheers of... Oh, can't count early in the morning. 500 bits. Thank you so much. Just wanted to say thanks for helping me improve so much. Sure thing. I'm glad you're improving so rapidly. Knight c6 is an idea, but I think you have a better move than that. Open the f6 for the queen. So Miss Lethal, sometimes you have to mix it up. You can't always do the same thing over and over again. So the idea here is to take. You take to, just to make sure that this pawn is unprotected, go b6. And now you will have lots of lots of threats on the pawn on c5. Let's say if bishop e3. You can take, take, and again, you guys can show off some tactical prowess. Boom. Here, queen a5, and you'll pick up that bishop. And at the end of the day, you will have an extra pawn in the center, which counts. 
and you will just have a good advantage. Yes, tiki tiki. And if CB, you take here first with a check and just collect the B6 pawn. So in this situation, your position is just very, very comfortable. Okay, so this was basically a very quick game. We again learned that queen f6 here is a typical way of winning the rook, or at least the piece, with knight c3, queen c3, and Edgar Saint won. But now we also know that if we play the big brother variation, the big Benoni, b6 is a typical way of undermining. Alright, so let's take a look at Anano Keiji's game. <clears throat> Any words and thoughts before we get into it, Anna? We're playing black. It's a black day. All of the games analyzed were with the black pieces. Hello, Harry. So, this was a 15 plus 10 minute game. Let's see what happened in the opening. So, e4, e5, knight f6, the good old Petrov. Okay. Um, takes d6, knight takes queen e2. And kind of like a bit of a sleepy move. And um, it became kind of popular because of Kramnik. Not really ambitious, but hey, it does happen. Anna no Keiji saying, I hate this position, it feels so dry. Always find this variation tough to play. I mean, if you find these positions dry, you might have to switch over to the Roy Lopez, where you can have more lively play. Because if you play the Petrov, oftentimes you do find yourself in these boring kind of positions. Knight f6 takes d7, d3, and this is a tad bit tedious, obviously. Bishop b7, castles, castles, h6, takes, and this is a mistake. Bishop takes f6 is not a great move. If we look at this position, what would be our first thought? What should be a better move for white? I'm even going to rotate the board for this split second. Again, should be fairly simple if we follow basic principles. Keep the bishop there. Correct, flesh, aha. Uh -huh. That makes sense. But mostly, you want to keep the pin. Keeping the pin is always the most annoying move. And in general, in chess, keeping pressure means a whole lot. You want to keep the pressure on. When your opponent actually took on f6, here comes the dream scenario for black. You actually get the bishop pair and then you can hope for some advantage. Keep the pin. Jim C, it's very important to keep the pin. By the way, if you are excited about such wise thoughts and ideas, you might want to check out our YouTube. So bishop takes f6. Knight d5, bishop d8, and probably your opponent felt that, hey, I will get an active knight, but then the infantry is just going to chase that knight away with c6 and d5, and the only thing left will be the bishops. So it's not something that is terribly, terribly awful in this situation for black. Okay, one. Bishop e6, okay, that's fine. Although c6 makes sense as well. And 
after d5 this knight would be sort of pushed back and you would have like a little bit of a space advantage as your pawn has reached the fifth and white did not reach the fifth yet i'm gonna stop here a little bit and ask you anna if you considered c6 or you were just fixated on bishop e6 also if anyone has anything to say about this position do speak up i am ready to answer any of the questions related to this game Thank you for the follow. Scroll focus. In any case, bishop e6 was played. There's nothing wrong with it, but I would prefer just chasing away the knight with the pawns. Knight f4, and that's actually a very smart move by white trying to use that extra time. And that's actually the reason I kind of preferred c6. However, c6 does have like a downside too. It takes away this very natural square of knight c6 from this knight on b8. Knight f4, bishop g4. That's good. Pinning. I mean, it's already kind of unpinned, but it's still a good move. Knight d4. Okay. Bishop takes c2. Rook takes. Rook takes is not that great. I think rook f takes e2 would have been better just reorganizing. And if you compare this position to the previous one, I would definitely say that white's position improved. Why? Well, in this case, black no longer has the bishop pair, and white has a good knight on d4, and these guys on b8 and a8 are quite passive. So objectively, this might even be worse for black. So that's why c6 would have been better. Because bishop e6, your bishop was forced to waste time. In fact, time is very much critical, even in endgames, or especially in endgames. You just spent too many times moving this bishop around just to exchange it off. But okay. Here takes the other move that I was thinking about is bishop g5. Did you consider this move of bishop g5, Anna? It might not be perfect, but it is an idea I think well worth remembering with this king and knight aligned oh you played it later okay so good so takes i just wanted to point out that you could also do it right now however in that case white can't take on g4 and it's just merely a trade in any case takes takes and now bishop g5 is much much stronger g3 knight d7 rook e1 knight f6 and i really like this plan you are improving your knight and also you're not in a rush to take on f4 morning stuffed pink owl now one of the things that you have to remember in chess if you can retain a pin or retain pressure you should do so isn't the bishop stuck not really because i think but uh, do prove me wrong if you felt differently on an okeji i think you are going to take on f4 but you're waiting for the right moment to do so in any case i like this maneuver of knight d7 knight f6 you're keeping the pressure and you note that white can't really do anything about the fact that you're going to take on f4 later Yeah, I was waiting for him to break the pin. Okay, very good. That's that's what I would do as well, I'll be honest. King b1 takes. And this is again a typical, typical high class play. You are 
setting up some pressure and you wait for a useless move and then you use and take on f4 and now black actually has some targets on the king side so white has hopes of getting advantage now pink owl has a point white will have some counterplay with these doubled rooks however at the moment if you go rook e7 there's knight d5 and again it was good to retain this bishop you not only hit that rook but you hit that knight on f4 rook e4 you go f5 hitting that rook and if the rook moves then this knight is falling so here now bishop f4 is nice gf rook e8 okay i guess you're trying to neutralize um here but rook e8 looks a little dodgy i'll be honest with you so first off why is rook e8 a little bit a little bit dodgy can anybody tell me what is the problem with this move knight b5 exactly so either white could take or knight b5 immediately and then suddenly they're just weaknesses on the queen side. So in hindsight, 2020, you could go a6, just take away that square and if rook e7, you just go knight d5 here and you just go rook d8 and trouble averted. So you do have to be mindful of this knight b5 ideas because it can get very, very annoying. Not that rook e8 by in itself such a terrible move. It ain't. Just I would prefer to get rid of this knight. Or even just get rid of it before it happens. Takes, takes, takes. Now it's good. All is good because the knight is defending the square b4 uh-huh knight f6 so we get into this end game phase whenever we get into an end game what is first priority What is the first priority in an endgame, especially with a king and knight endgame? Activating the king. So with that in mind, the next move should be quite logical. King h7, king g6, and with these pawns actually so scattered, it's a dangerous move. White might even have to play f5 immediately, because if you go king b2, king g6, and I have a clear route towards the h2 and f4 pawns. This might even be objectively completely losing for white. Did you consider this idea of going up with your king? And again, note with this king far, far away, it's pretty hopeless to hold these pawns together. You're going to lose one of them and then you're just going to lose completely. I thought the pawns were weak enough to win. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But again, um, not saying knight f6 is necessarily that bad. However, this could have been maybe an easier route. Because side note, you have all your pawns defended here. Once you played knight f6, these pawns on c7 and a7 suddenly are a little weak. So knight b5, very good move by your opponent. 
trying to latch on those. My g4, h3, h3. Hmm, I don't even know if knight b5 is best. Possibly f3 is annoying. Knight d5, f5. And if knight b4, then knight b5. And it's not quite clear yet, even though possibly you're still better because these pawns are weaker than these guys on the queen side. What to do if f5? Oftentimes you can go g6 or f, just walk this way. So if here f5, I would consider either g5 or g6. And if takes, then you do the same thing. You walk the king up. Or if not, then you walk the king towards e5 and bother the f5 pawn. Anyways, you play knight f6, knight g4, and probably knight b5 in, on a second thought is a mistake because it allows your knight g4 idea winning a crucial pawn, creating a passer. So knight b5, h3, takes, knight takes, knight h3, and now this is clearly winning for you. The h pawn is just too strong. Jim C, thank you for subscribing with a tier one sub. f5, knight f4, very good. You're taking away the square and then preparing the push. Knight b5, by now white king needs to start sprinting. But probably even that is not helping in the long run. You can't even win the knight because the pawn will be already on h2, promoting. So that's kind of an issue. Active king in the end game is very important, says Drew Hart. I lost one of my games against Danish for exactly this reason. Passive king. Yep. Passive kings can destroy whole concepts. Knight b5, h5, h4. That pawn is just too fast. King f8, now you're bringing your king. That's good. Although by now I'm even considering g5, but there's nothing wrong with king f8. Just walking up, collecting that pawn. X, a4, check, X. Okay, so here I would consider g5. Just trying to support that pawn. But okay, this is also winning. Knight c2, h2. And those pawns are just too fast and they're promoting. So white lost. So as far as I can see, you had some very nice moves keeping the tension. I'm gonna go back there for a second. And again, like we did previously, how would you guys rate this game from a black's perspective? Out of 10. Also, Anna, how do you feel you played this game? So Harry Kush is very conservative, 5-6. Gimme Shelter says 7. King Loves Queen says 8. Uh, six and a half. How would you rate your own game, Anna? Was okay, but missed some ideas. Like you said, maybe seven ish. Oh, I didn't say seven. Gimme Shelter said seven. Um, but uh, yeah, if I think about it, seven does that. That sounds like a, a good score for this game out of 10. Because you played some very nice moves. H6 was very nice. 
keeping the tension was very good. Keeping the tension was very good and possibly that was the reason that you won the game. And seven, because you missed some ideas. True, true, that's true. But also kudos for admitting some mistakes. One of the things the, and the ways you can better yourself in chess if you admit that you made mistakes and if you admit that you actually missed some opportunities. Because in the future, you can actually say, hey, I know what I did wrong and you can use them in the future. So taking was nice. Here, I think a6 would have been a bit circumspect. Here, takes here. And I think this would have been better. But after knight b5 mistake, knight g4, then you were just coasting. I think you were doing fine. If rook e7, so a6, here you go here, knight d5, and you just exchange that rook off. And the thing is, yes, very few material left, but as in the game, the h2, f2, and f4 pawns are just way too weak. So they are unlikely to survive, or even if they do, you will have a much more active king in the endgame, either via king h7, king g6, or king f8, king e7, after the exchange of rooks. So even here, I think you have a good position and a hefty advantage. So like you are still playing for a win here. It's not white who's trying to win. I don't know if that is an acceptable explanation. I hope it is. If white hasn't messed up his pawn structure, then it was a very close game. Flash Aha uh -huh, saying, I'm looking for a review. Okay, so let me take a look. It is a very drawish line, but that's why I would say either you switch to the Spanish or you will have to try to win these type of positions. But you did create some counter chances and you did win. So um, I know it's dry and it's nobody's favorite position. Probably one of the most be hated positions, to be honest. But you have to deal with it if you play the Petrov. Finally, we're going to see a game where our subscriber is white. Okay, d4, c6, d4, d5, e5, the main main line. So flash, aha, uh -huh. tell me a bit about this game before we delve into it. This is a Karakon. Yeah, definitely check out the Marshall. Oh no, no, KG, it's a very good opening. You play the side variation. Just tell me about how you approach this game or what you were thinking during the game. I know what was going on. Got very dynamic, okay. Caught your opponent off a book. Okay. Okay, so let's get into it. Bishop f5, h4. This is a Bronstein line. The whole point is you would trap the bishop in this case. Bishop has nowhere to hide. And if you go here, I capture you. 
Therefore, black plays h5, bishop g5, and this is a tricky share of line where white is going for an aggressive play. Queen b6, bishop d3, and usually they take on d3, and sometimes even capture the b pawn. On the plant, bishop g4, and here white plays a very good move, sort of the exception. White plays an interesting move that usually isn't that good, but in this case it is quite good. And the move is f3. Why is this so good? Well, black has been wasting moves. Now, queen b6 is kind of like a semi waiting move it does attack the pawn but it doesn't really help this king from getting away from the center also getting out the bishop on f5 isn't really helping too much with castling here here again one two and after f3 this will be the third move with the bishop so you're actually winning time bishop d7 knight e2 takes knight d2 now, black is up a pawn, but you get good compensation in this case. F3 is a very special case in this scenario, Laura. Because black is already lagging in development. In other cases, you wouldn't want to go here and do this because it would have some issues. I then Alex. Thank you for the follow. Queen b6, rook b1, c4. White plays very good chess so far. And indeed, Flesha has opponent is 2360. So why is white doing well so far, even though down a pawn? Where is castle? Exactly my question to black. Where is castle? And the answer is no castle. No castle, but white can castle anytime he she likes. No development for black. Also, what's going for white that doesn't really go for black at the moment? Active peace play. Look at that. This rook is pressing on b7. I have developed this rook, the bishops, and the knights. And I'm just to move away from castling. And again, after that, we will have to decide what to do. And I think that will be the moment then that flesh aha will be kind of being faltering or will be faltering. Center control. Yes, we do have a very big, hefty center control. e6. A good move, trying to stabilize. Castles, bishop e7, f4. Why did you play f4, flesh aha? Uh -huh. It's kind of an important question and topic. Why did you play f4? So if black takes on if black takes on g5, I can capture back. Was that the only idea why you played f4? Hello, John's Abraham. Well, the king is so iffy that even if you trap the bishop, it doesn't matter. Black is just so underdeveloped, white will have full compensation. You want, you're trying to open up the position. Good. So your opponent sort of panicked and stopped with g6. Queen c2, very good. I like queen c2 for multiple reasons. It eyes this g6 pawn and it also connects these rooks. And that's very important whenever you're playing these games. 
you want to have good communication between your pieces. Bishop takes, f takes, very good move. You want to open it up for the rook. 97 and black is going to go for knight f5 just to pluck in that hole. As you can see that f7 pawn is extremely weak just as this guy. Now if black could consolidate, white would be in trouble. You've got to do everything in your power to avoid that as white. Look f3 is a nice move. Suppose you want to double. Knight f5 takes, that's fine. G takes f5. And here, this is the critical moment. This is the critical moment. So what is white playing for in this position? It's clear that white is better. White has center. White has more pieces developed. The king is castled. None of this has been done with black. So let's try to figure out how can we go for a win in this position? I mean, not really for a win, but at least let's try to devise a plan. Prochess, thank you for the follow. Prochessy, that is. So when you have a good position, you don't want to sacrifice. You should sacrifice when A, you're in trouble, B, you're 100% sure it's winning. In this case, you have a good position. Why sacrifice a good position? Open up the position, but how? How can we open up the position? This is very close, correct. So we would love to get close to the h5 and f7 pawns, right? How can we do that? g6, they capture. So our goal should be to create targets somehow on the king side. Now that four makes sense, but by in itself it doesn't do a whole bunch. Yeah. You should take. You can take because the queen is hanging. ED, and now you have a very strong move. And that is I g3. And suddenly, once you win that pawn, it's game over. It's basically game over because if the knight lands on d6, there's no way black is going to survive. And if you take, queen takes f5, and I will have lots of pressure against the f pawn. And with this knight on the rim, this is basically a winning advantage. So the main and most important idea that you should look for in this position is to open it up at all costs. So see the ED knight g3 is one of them. And knight f4, but not just playing knight f4, mostly in the conjunction of playing g6, undermining the c6 pawn. That would have been the way. Did you consider these moves? Flash, aha. Uh -huh. Some sacrifices does make sense. So even takes, takes, and rook takes f5. I wouldn't say it's a bad idea, Lauren. In fact, it makes sense, but you don't need to do it. Your position's already overwhelming. So takes, you played c5. Now c5 is a mistake. B6 
because you kind of misunderstood the dynamic of the position. You should be going and trying to open up the position if your opponent's king is in the center. Are you advertising your name, Lawrence? Is that what you're trying to do there? In any case, c5 is not a good move. You've got to go for opening the position, for sure. c5, king d8, rook b3, bishop c8. This makes sense. Just now it's very difficult to break on through. Man. I don't think you had your morning coffee, Lawrence. And I'm sad. You should have your morning coffee. It's healthy. How did I know you didn't have a morning coffee? I could tell. I could tell. So, you did make some inaccuracies with c5 and rook b3. Yet, it's not over. I think... I still think you have a better position. How else can we still try to open up the position in this case? Sack a knight. Okay. But you still have to decide where you want to sacrifice it. F5, okay. Possibly. My right now it's well defended by this bishop. So, um, if you go here, knight d7, when the knight blocks, then you can say pick a boo and then take on f5. At the moment, it's not likely because the bishop is defending it. So, you can even win those two pawns. However, it's still an interesting idea is to go to queen d1 and try to win the h5 pawn over there. And the other move is knight f4, because again, if knight d7, g6, and this guy on e6 is going to fall, and after knight f3, knight g5, you are going to have a big advantage. So your main problem was, in this part of the game, Flash is that you didn't go for these aggressive ideas. That is kind of the deal. So knight f4, was that played? D8, you did play knight f4, good. But you didn't play g6, that's kind of the issue. Knight f8, in d1, knight takes h5, okay, although again, inside 2020, your king is a little bit iffy over there, which is a problem. So you don't want to take pawns in front of your king. b6, takes takes, b5, knight f8. And you can already see that black has consolidated, and in fact, you just activated black's rook. How is this iffy, but not g6? Because you were undermining the e6 pawn. That's why. Now, I mean, I do understand that it looks very similar, but if this e6 pawn falls, usually black just gets mated. Knight c5. Knight g6, and queen d3 is not that great because you're kind of cutting off your own rook's support. f4 takes, and you don't want to walk up to these ideas. You should always keep your king over on g1 or g2, never on g3. Queen e7. Rook here, boom, 
and that's the problem you actually opened up the position in front of your king and now it's going down I takes takes check check takes and it is game over so what we sort of learned from this game is that a you don't want to open it up in front of your own king b you've got to open up the center while your opponent's king is still chilling in the middle so coming back to this position you played fine but here you really had to either take take and go knight g3 knight f5 or go for knight f4 g6 just making sure that you either target the e6 or the f5 pawn after this exchanges so that would have been that correct way of playing i hope that helped you flash aha uh -huh. In any case, I really hope you guys enjoyed this lecture slash arena stream. I hope you had fun. And if you are a social being, you might want to check out our Discord. And if you're not a social being, you can still re-watch this VOD and enjoy yourself. Meanwhile, we are going to make a little bit of a visit to Mr. Peter Swidler. So I would appreciate if you would join this good old journey over to his site. Also, we have some YouTube material that you might want to check out if you want to better yourself as a chess player. Or if you just want to have fun, that's also fine with me. And again, thank you for all the games that you sent in. Hope you had a fun time and hope you learned a bit of what you could do better and what you did perfectly because we had games that were just perfect. So with that, I am signing off and have fun at Peter's channel. Say hi from me. And I am signing off. Thank you for the follow, Granny's Gambit. Nothing like Granny's Gambit. All right, guys. Wish you all the best and see you next time. Bye-bye.